Good afternoon, New York, and the rest of our listeners around the globe. My name is June Stoyer, and I'm the host of the Organic View Radio Show. Our podcast is available on iTunes, Zoom, and you can also visit our website at www.theorganicview.com. If you'd like to be on the show or would like to find out about sponsorship opportunities, please contact us at questions at theorganicview.com. Today's show is sponsored by Eden Foods, the most trusted name in certified organic clean food. When you shop online at EdenFoods.com, enter the coupon code ORGVIEW to receive 20% off any regularly priced items, excluding cases. For other promotional offers, please visit TheOrganicView.com's website. And don't forget to check out our contest section. Over the last year, we've discussed various efforts by the pesticide industry to mislead the public about the global decline of our pollinators. They have even gone as far as to launch a bee health advocacy organization to give the illusion that they genuinely care. Meanwhile, neonicotinoids, which are the most widely used pesticide on the market, continue to rake in millions of dollars. However, environmental groups are fighting back. On today's show, Tom and I are going to talk to Margie Alt, Environment America's Executive Director, about a multi-million dollar campaign led to educate 700,000 Americans. First, I'd like to welcome to the show my co-host, Colorado Beekeeper, Mr. Tom Theobald. Hello, Tom. Hello, June. Good to be back. And our guest today, Ms. Margie Alt. Good afternoon, Margie, and welcome to the show. Thanks, June. Hi, Tom. How are you? Hi, Hi, Margie. I'm anxious to talk to you. Margie, before we begin, can you please take a moment and share a little bit about yourself with our listeners? Sure. So I, as you mentioned, I'm the director of a group called Environment America, and uh, I've been in this role for about eight years since we started the organization. And before that, I have been working on all sorts of different campaigns, um, a number of environmental issues, clean water and clean air, a number of consumer protection issues, like getting toxics out of products and helping to make the democracy stronger. And basically, I've been an organizer all my life. Excellent. Margie, can you also talk about environmental Environment America. Can you give us a little bit of history about the organization and what your primary issues are? Yeah, I'd love to. So Environment America is about eight years old. We are primarily a campaign organization. And what I mean by that is we're all about educating the public and engaging people in the environmental issues that we think need to be top of mind. So we spend a lot of time going to folks' homes, door-to-door, on street corners, online, on the phones, in church basements and other venues to let people know what's going on, make sure they understand the issues, and then work to get them involved in our campaigns. And we have state offices in almost half the states around the country and members in every state, and we're working to build up an army of people who are going to make sure that we have the clean and green and healthy planet that we want today and for future generations. Margie, who supports Environment America? Are you a 501c3 nonprofit? Yeah, we actually have both a 501c3 and a 501c4. So we are able to do all sorts of direct advocacy in Congress and in state legislatures, as well as public education and policy work. And the reason we are so flexible is because the vast majority of our support comes from average people all across the country. So we're primarily a small donor operation, uh, have over a million people on our list, people chip in to try and help defray our costs to do this kind of campaign work. Thank you. Your approach is quite different from so many other organizations. How exactly do you engage with the public? I think this is fascinating that you actually go door to door. What has that been like? It can be challenging, June, honestly, but mostly it's just a load of fun. I mean, it's really great to get out and talk to people. We have campaign staff all across the country. Um, In fact, they're probably leaving most of their East Coast offices right now to get out and talk to people, and especially on this issue about um, saving the bees and, and banning neonics. What we're finding is no matter who, you know, what walk of life, what city, what state, People know a little bit about the problem, but what they don't realize is what a you know huge problem it's going to be for our food supply and ultimately the planet if we don't save the bees. 
And so our staff just talked to folks about that, about the foods we'll lose, about what it means for the ecosystem, and, and asked people to get involved, become a member, send a, a petition or a postcard or sign a letter to the EPA, and then also to make some changes in their own lives wherever relevant, you know, make sure they garden in a bee-friendly way or they don't buy products that might be inadvertently hurting the bees, et cetera. Margie, uh, I'm particularly interested to know how you come by the neonicotinoids. I know there's been a lot of discussion, but I'm wondering if it was because of water contamination or the general discussion. And I'm also interested to know what your your primary inputs for information are from the bee world. Sure, and I'd love to learn more from you with your firsthand experience, Tom. But we came to the issue of bees really from following the science. And, you know, we have, in addition to our campaign and outreach staff, a, a small staff of policy experts who watch what's on the horizon. And we've just been reading more and more and more about colony collapse disorder and, and the die-off of bees and reading more and more about neonics. And we think there's a pretty darn clear case to make that we just can't be using that kind of pesticide if we want to keep our food supply safe and our family safe and the planet healthy for future generations. And so as we looked at the science, we felt that was clear. The policy seems clear. When we kind of surveyed the field of other groups, we saw a lot of folks doing great work on the policy side and a lot of people doing good work to try and change um, what some of the stores like Home Depot and Lowe's are doing. But we thought where we could make a real difference was in bringing more and more people into the fight and building more and more political pressure, especially on our federal decision makers who have the power to ban neonics. And so that's how we got engaged. And we, um, you know, work with a lot of colleagues in the national environmental community who have some great policy folks on their staff and share a lot of information from them, we try and keep up with the studies and as much as possible also talk to farmers and beekeepers and gardeners like yourself so that we can understand people's real life experience of the problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. In regards to your efforts towards the EPA, do you have any particular strategy, if you will, to try to communicate to the EPA? because? They have not been responsive to the beekeeping community, much less other bee health advocacy groups. Well, I do think this is a case where I'm sure the people at the EPA are good intentioned, but they have a lot of competing priorities, and I'm sure they're hearing an awful lot from Bayer and Monsanto and other producers and users of neonics. And I think the best thing we can do is pressure them with the deep and broad concerns that the public has about this issue. So I think the most important thing we can do now is make sure that not only the EPA, but the whole Obama administration really understands what a huge priority this is as people find out more about it and how much people want to see doing something real and with teeth about saving the bees should be one of the final priorities of the Obama administration. I think it's a great legacy issue for um, this president and for this EPA. When your campaigners are going door to door, what sort of steps will they be suggesting to people that they can take? Well, the number one thing they'll do is um, ask, you know, make sure people understand the issue. The number two thing they'll do is ask people to add their signature to a petition to the EPA. And then we're also asking folks right now if they happen to be in the food industry, own a restaurant or something like that, because we're also looking to get more and more support in that particular community, knowing how much people care about food and mm -hmm. just feeling ask like them if they, just out. ask them if they eat. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and, you know, there's a whole food network, right, and all the celebrity of chefs. So we're hoping if we can find enough people in the food industry, that will be another interesting and, we hope, powerful set of voices mm -hmm. to bring along with the public, along with the beekeepers, along with the farmers, et cetera. The medical industry is another important element that really hasn't come forward to any great degree yet. So that's another 
group that needs to be stirred a bit, I think. Well, that's a great idea, and we have not uh, we've done work with the medical community before on a lot of issues, so we've done a lot of work with them on the clean water issue, as you can imagine, and a lot on clean energy and, and really avoiding all that asthma and other air pollution from burning fossil fuels. But we haven't yet started engaging health professionals in this issue, so that's a great suggestion, Tom. Well, I will say one thing. The only two elected officials that I've come across that have really done anything have been Senator Brad Hoyleman from New York and New Jersey's Senator Raymond Lesniak, who is a total powerhouse. He's doing a tremendous amount of environmental work, and I'm sure you're familiar with his work protecting the environment and the water in the state of New Jersey. But when it comes to neonicotinoids, he's also very aggressively pursuing this area. And I do wish you all the best with the Obama administration and the legacy that they're leaving behind, because so far... All they've done is unleash four GMO crops last term and issue two memorandums in a row. It's now the month of June, so we're Tom and I are awaiting yet a third memorandum, which is requiring immediate action. So we're just wondering when that action is going to take place, but perhaps you folks can do something that the other groups have not, and you certainly have the budget and the manpower, and I think it's great that you are taking the approach that you are, and I think that you are going to reach a lot of people that may not understand what's at stake. So, you know, I do wish you all the best with your endeavor. There's been a groundswell of, uh, of public interest, and it will be interesting to see what the effect of your efforts are. Yeah, we are... Um you know, pretty focused on making sure we not only get a lot of people, but a lot of people who raise their voices. And so for anybody listening, um, please do go to our website. It's www.environmentamerica.org. The name of this campaign is No Bees, No Food. And if you go to that page, you can send uh, your thoughts directly to the EPA and add your name to our petition. And we'd be glad to follow up and get folks more involved. In local and state efforts, we have tips on how to do uh, bee-friendly gardening and which foods are pollinated by bees, so really hoping that people will come join us because with all the important work you all are doing, those uh, elected officials you mentioned before June, and then our army of people, we're hoping we can get Munich's band once and for all. That would be tremendous. I just wanted to say I wish you well. Every bit helps and I think the public is becoming more and more aware of how they're being misled. I think though even the people who are intimately involved in this issue have yet to grasp the true enormity of the poisoning that's gone on and I'd like to talk to you maybe after the program a little bit and share some of my concerns with you Margie but it's been very enjoyable talking to you and I hope you do well. Thank you, and great talking to both of you. And thanks so much for having me on the show, June and Tom. Uh, you're welcome. Margie, thank you so much for being on the show, and thank you, Tom. Thank you, June, for providing a venue for these kinds of discussions. They're very important, and we need to have more of them. Margie, one more time, can you give our listeners your website? Yeah, it's www.environmentamerica.org, and our campaign is No Bees, No Food. Thank you. And folks, please check out the companion article, which will be available on TheOrganicView.com. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, where there are a number of interviews and other videos that pertain to the pollinator decline, as well as other topics. Thank you for tuning in. This has been June Stoyer with The Organic View Radio Show. Have a great afternoon. <laughs>